Now, if I had a dollar for every time my friend asked me this question, I'll be a millionaire by now. And the question always is, Jin, what laptop should I get? The answer is not so simple. But for a lot of people, sometimes you don't need to pay a lot for a good laptop. You should actually pay for what you need. And for a lot of people, that is about getting the everyday computer, that workhorse computer, that can get all your tasks done. So today, this is the topic we want to talk about. How do you choose your everyday computer? So when choosing your everyday computer, the first thing you need to think about, of course, is budget, right? And roughly, I can tell you that a good budget is about $1,000 to $1,100. And these days, you can get a pretty good computer for that kind of price. Uh, the first consideration to think about actually is the size of the laptop. Now, if you see this here, this is a 14-inch uh, laptop. Uh, this is an everyday computer. Uh, there is another one that is a bit bigger, which is 15.6 inch. The price actually is the same uh, for these two sizes. So it's, it's what you want to do. If you want it to be uh, have a bigger screen, you actually have to compromise for the weight. Uh, if you want it like this, of course, then the weight, you could get it about 1.45 kilograms. So for me personally, I'm quite, quite a stickler about weight, right? I don't like my laptops heavy. I like them to be as light as possible. So 1.45 kilograms is, is pretty okay. Not too heavy, not too light. So I, I, I personally would go for a 14 inch. Now, first thing you want to think about when you go for this thing is what are the different specs, right? So everybody knows you talk about the CPU and, and for CPU, they have all the different types. For me, I always believe in the mid-range and mid-range is really your i5 if you're buying an Intel or the Ryzen uh, 5 series. That's really good enough. Uh, think of the CPU as the engine that drives your car. That's the same for computers. The next thing you want to think about is Windows, right? People always assume that their laptops come with Windows, but there are actually options out there where they sell you the laptop without Windows, although that is rare. So make sure there's Windows installed. Third thing, of course, to think about is RAM. Now, RAM, RAM or random access memory is kind of the, the memory that you can read your programs from, right? While your storage is done on your hard disk or your SSD, that's where your data is stored. When, when the brain of the computer, the CPU, is reading the information, he cannot read from the storage directly, he needs to read from memory or from RAM. So having a bigger RAM means you can run more applications at the same time. Now from my experience, actually these days, unless, unless you're playing some heavy duty games, 8GB of RAM is more than enough. Okay, so that's what you should go for. Uh, next thing to think about, of course, is storage. Uh, storage to me, nothing less than 512GB. Uh, and you should go for SSD, not hard disk anymore, because SSD is faster. Uh, preferably, if you can afford a bit of a difference in price, go for one terabyte uh, because you know storage gets used up pretty quickly. And of course, screen, right? Uh, most people today go for a full HD screen. Uh, and if you look at this these days, I'm not sure you can see from there, but the angles are pretty good even for a budget computer. Uh, make sure that the screen has something called an IPS screen. The IPS screen ensures that you're able to look at your screen from different angles and still see the images uh, quite easily and clearly. Okay, there are a few more specs to think about. The other specs to think about is graphics, right? Uh, actually, these days, the CPU itself, it comes with integrated graphics. So you don't really need another separate graphics card uh, to, to do your functions. Uh, and you can play some very low-level graphic games with that. Uh, some of these machines actually give you an option to have an additional graphics card. Uh, my advice actually is you don't need it. Because even the additional graphics cards, it's so uh, low-level that you can't really play the powerful game. Right? But if you wanted a bit more flexibility, then go for the extra graphics card. Usually it will cost you about $100 extra, but these are not fantastic graphics cards. Right? Uh, the other thing of course is connectivity. Right? And, and if you're buying a machine, and sometimes it's not in the specs, you need to look for connectivity options. First thing you must think about is your wireless connectivity. You want to go for Wi-Fi 6, because that's the latest standard. Right? And you want to make sure there is Bluetooth. Uh, you can check it. And then of course, you got to make sure that you get your ports. Um, Standard ports, like here you can see, this is your LAN port. This is where you connect your LAN cable for internet. HDMI port, to make sure that you can connect to an external device like a monitor or a TV. Uh, you, need to, you should at least have two USB ports for your gadgets and for your mouse uh, or external keyboard, right? Uh, this one has a USB-C port, as you can see here. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a Thunderbolt 4. If you watched my last video, uh, the Thunderbolt 4 was a magic port. You can connect to the monitor, you know, you can draw power from the monitor. This is not one of those. This is just a standard USB-C port. So to make it easy for you, uh, I kind of put these specs together for you that you should think about, right? This should be like your base level. You should go for a CPU of an i5 or AMD Ryzen 5 series. You should get 8GB of RAM. 
uh, 512 gigabyte of SSD at least, one terabyte if you can afford the extra. Frankly, you don't need an additional graphics card because I think interior graphics is good enough. Uh, make sure it's got Wi-Fi 6 and it's got Bluetooth. And for the screen, go for a Full HD screen, uh, 14 inch. A spec like this would get you a pretty good machine for about $1,000, like this machine here that you see. So this is the Acer Aspire 5. The Acer Aspire is the range of Acer laptops that targets the everyday computing user, right? Um, and, and why I choose Acer as the base model to compare, I mean first they're providing me the laptops to do this video, but more importantly Acer has a reputation of being a brand that offers very good bang for your buck. Uh, may not be the sexiest brand out there, right? But it's always value for money. And you should use it as a baseline to compare against other brands. So this budget workhorse, or what we call everyday computer, is really for the boss that wants to give the staff an inexpensive computer and get the job done. You know, maybe for the parent who is very, on a very tight budget and wants to make sure that the child has something that he or she can use for school learning and for surfing the internet uh, using Microsoft Office. Uh, this is what this machine can do. I think the key thing for us is always uh, pay for what you need. Don't pay more and don't pay less.